Hey YouTube, how's everybody doing? JC here with the Cuban Redneck DIY channel. I want to thank you for stopping by. I want to thank those who have subscribed. And if you haven't already done so, please show me some love. I am trying to grow this channel. And I cannot do it without you guys. So today we didn't have a specific agenda. In fact, we have no uh, projects on the calendar. I just came back from fishing and I was doing a little bit of work on the computer. Uh, for a project that we got coming up, uh, we're going to be building some surround speakers, very small profile, about four inches round. Uh, anyhow, um, after 15, 20 minutes of standing by the computer, my feet started to get a little bit tired. And uh, I look around and I realized that there's nothing in this shop for me to plant my behind on. So there is plenty of wood at the uh, scrap pile and I decided to make a little project out of it. However, I didn't want to make it a, you know, one of those round, boring uh, shop stools. Uh, I think I'm going to make it a little bit more fancy, uh, kind of a bar stool type of situation. More than likely, I'm going to be using uh, treated wood. So it's something you're going to be able to take outside, use it in the barbecue area, out by the gazebo, whatever. So uh, I have some ideas, but nothing really set on stone. So I don't know, let's build something. With a million pictures floating in my head but nothing really standing out, I decided to troll the internet for ideas. After seeing a few images, I think that the type of stool that I want to build is called a saddle bench. This one from Mayfair caught my attention and its price makes it a perfect project inspiration since our budget is less than 10% of its cost. All right guys, now that we have an inspiration, let's talk about actual uh, materials and the assembly. So I'm going to be using uh, this decking uh, piece that I had. Uh, I originally glued this together for the uh, drill press stand, uh, but it was, it was bowing too bad due to these two nuts that we have here. Uh, so if you don't have access to scrap wood like this, you may want to consider buying a two by four treated uh, piece and just butt glue it, uh, butt join it with glue. Uh, that should be more than suffice for a share of our stool. And um, one thing that I would recommend if you have access to uh, a circular saw, uh, a table saw, whatever, is to take a little piece of skin off of here. Uh, I hate, one thing I hate about using uh, construction uh, two by fours is this rounded edge that they have here. Uh, I never like the crease that they leave in between. So uh, if you cut just a little 116, you know, 116 will do. Uh, you end up with a much nicer uh, butt joint and, uh, than that. Other than that, uh, so if you need to get a two by four, you're probably gonna pay about $45 um, and for an eight foot length. So if you cut that and divide that into four, you're gonna end up with like $1.50, $2 for the top deck. For the legs, I'm gonna use this uh, one and a half by one and a half squares. I believe the proper term for this thing is called balusters, and you'll find them in the fencing area, in the deck area of any big box store. Uh, this is the upright on a, on a railing uh, on a deck. Uh, this is also treated. And last but not least, a uh, this is a three quarter, no, seven eighths dowel I had laying around. Uh, this costs about $3. So in total, we got about the ten dollars of materials and um, nothing fancy. So let's get to work. I started the process by setting up a fence that would allow me to cut four pieces at twenty-four inches in length. Those were done with a miter saw set at five degrees. In hindsight, I should have used a circular saw miter box. After all, my channel is all about building stuff cheap and with basic tools. But it is late and I want to get this done by the end of the day. I then proceeded to cut two stretchers or spindles. Those are the horizontal pieces between the legs. And then my wife walked by and said, you know, it would be nice if we have more of those so that we can use it as a step. Well, guess what? I ended up adding two to each side. This is a huge variation from the inspiration piece but when it's all said and done, it doesn't look bad and it does add extra functionality. With all the pieces cut, it's time to drill the holes for the spindles. 
I started with the ones that are at an angle with the legs. The easiest way to do this is to angle the table of the drill press. But in case you don't have one, here's how you do it with just a jig and a hand drill. To do this, you need two squares. You just want to find how high you need to bring the leg up in order to make the angle cut square against the vertical axis. Then add a small support where the leg can rest. Use the second square to draw a vertical line at the angle your hole needs to be. Place the leg on a flat surface and wedge one end with a piece of scrap until the line is square against the horizontal surface. You can then go ahead and drill while making sure that your drill stays at a vertical axis. Since I am doing this by the seat of my pants with little or no regards for dimensions, I decided to do a quick dry fit just to make sure I was in the right path. I have to say, this looks pretty good for what many people will consider junk wood. Okay, with everything looking good, let's drill the second set of stretchers. These holes are straight, so all you have to do is make sure the legs are square against each other. Mark and drill. Because this is low quality wood, a good sanding is highly recommended, unless a rusty look is what you seek. I did a once over with a 150 grit foam pad and eventually a 220 pass with the orbital sander. As you saw previously on the dry fit, for the assembly all we are doing is fitting the dowels into the holes. This time with plenty of glue and pin nails to hold everything in place while the glue dries. But if you have patience, these are 100% optional. Know that I use tie bond 2 for 90% of my projects. And when you do, you have to work fast because it sets pretty quick. If you want a little more working time, consider tie bond 3. It sets a little bit slower and it is supposed to be stronger. Although to be honest, I have never been able to measure the difference. After cleaning all the squeeze out, I use my $8 Harbor Freight Japanese saw to cut the end of the dowels flush with the legs. And after one more sanding session, I move right on to paint using Rust-Oleum X2. By now it may sound like I am rushing the project, and I am. I got involved and I lost track of time and I skipped lunch at the same time. I wanted to get this done in one day. While the legs drying and after grabbing a sandwich, I started to work on the top of the seat. This piece was already pretty smooth, so all I did is grab the grinder and made the valley in the middle a little bit more pronounced. This is not the right type of disc to use for this type of work, but it actually worked pretty good, as long as you do it slowly. I also rounded the edges using a quarter inch round over bit. Although it is late in the afternoon, the Florida sun and the heat got the rust oil dry to a touch in about an hour, and with a couple of hours of sun left, I decided to go ahead and install the seat. This part was a compromise, I even cheated a little bit by resting the legs on top of the seat and tracing the contact area so that I can drill pilot holes from the bottom. I say a compromise because I originally intended to use dowels, however I didn't have anything bigger than a quarter and the two pieces didn't quite sit together perfectly. For this reason I opted to use liquid nails and screws instead. Whenever you have two pieces of wood not quite meeting perfectly, liquid nails is always one good way to cheat. Although I'm using screws, I kind of sink the holes deep enough so that I can come back and insert dowels on the heads at a later date. Hey guys, so what do you guys think? Uh, I'm very pleased with the final product. Uh, definitely not $250. And I know a lot of the YouTube guys uh, with $100,000 shops are going to say, Oh, that's not furniture quality. Well, you know what? I got my behind on it, so it is furniture. Um, very pleased with the finish. Uh, I mean, I went crazy cheap with the wood. So basically, your materials have a lot of... Uh, influence on the on the outcome of the product uh, some of this wood is warped and you know all kinds of stuff but at the end of the day i mean even if you go with selected pine i don't think the stool costs more than 20 dollars uh, compared to like 
two hundred some dollars they're asking online. Um, at the end of the day, it's something you made, something you can be proud of, and you, what do you know? It may even save some money. So until next time, this is JC with the Cuban Redneck DIY channel. I want to see you in the next belt. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thank you.